You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, and here from Drake Queen Gaming. It's something mounts with the gaming drag today. I'm coming back at you into the Let's Play episode of Heroes Advent Max's Path. So y'all, before we jump into it, just want to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community discord server, and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm, Chan, you were up, and let's go. Oh, yeah. Right here, okay. <clears throat> you sure, Cassie? You can eat all that? Honestly, Max, your eyes are bigger than your stomach. Heh, <laughs> nonsense. We need to stay well fed for the trip ahead. It's alright, Max, we can just share this one. Are you sure? That's barely enough for just a single serving. Okay. Probably. Well, in that case, I'll just add a few more so we can share. And he did exactly that, throwing a few more layers to the pancake tower before placing the plate between you, between both you, between both you, between you both to share. Once all of you cleaned your plates, you joined Cody in stacking the plates and cutlery back onto the tray. Maxim excused himself outside to get the carriage ready. Alex also followed suit. It was then that the German Shepherd and the Snow Leopard went by to help. Ah. <clears throat> Oh, thank you, Ash. Ten, we're about to leave soon. I mean no offense, sir, but I suppose it's high time everyone got going. If we're expecting another crowd rushing in soon, and this booth could be another group of customers served. Uh... Yo, look to Ashford, who quickly gathered all the stacks of plates to bring back to the kitchen. He must be in a hurry, I suppose. Indeed, he's been clocking out rather early for his morning shift. Hmm, can I trust you to hold the fort yet again, Ten? Always, boss. You can leave it to me. Just go ahead with your companions. Huh, thank you. All right, let's go, guys. Yep, yep. <sighs> you all joined up with Alex on the field outside, while Max was still away preparing the carriage at the stables. You'd feel a pit in your stomach with anticipation, if they weren't already filled to the brim with breakfast. Um, something wrong, Rye? Oh, uh, nothing. It's just... What Cassian said the other day, and what happened when we were last at the Akai still bothers me. What Alex said? What Cassian said? Yeah, about the corrupt fertilizer. If they could sneak it into the city, would they have done the same, the same around the base of the Akai? Because of how that serpent slipped into the forest. Aye, like how Linus slipped in. Could they have weakened the Akai in the same way? That precisely is why we're heading out there to examine it in person, and see if we can't speed up the, the GC's healing by studying it. Hmm. It's alright, Rai. None of us expected any of this. Thanks, Cody. You heard the heavy footfalls and recognizable growl of the, of the howl of the hooves as Max directed them to where to, directed them to where you were. The hooves? Ah. Creatures. Stopping right in front of the group. Alright. Second y'all. Coffee time. Oh, yeah. Behind the carriage was a second cart, covered by a large tarp. You could see the familiar metal and runic tools from Alex's, la Alex's lab underneath. The Lynx quickly went over to perform one last security check, just to make sure his equipment was safe before hopping inside the carriage. You climbed into the seat next to Max, riding shotgun with him. You gonna be alright out there? Don't want you to go and go inside the- don't you want to go inside the cabin instead? Nah, I'd rather get some fresh air. It's been a long time since we went on a carriage ride anyway. Max gives you a tacit smile, still seemingly unsure about the practicality of your choice, but happy with the company nonetheless. He looked back as Ray climbed into the cabin with Alex, while Cody took up the rear to keep an eye on the adjoining cart as well as anything that might come from behind. Everyone ready? Uh-huh. Everything's secure in the rear. <sighs> yep, Al and I should be good. All good there, Cassian? Yep, let's go. All right, onward. hee Max spurred on the hooves as they began to trot their way out of the city. As you rode through the city streets, you saw a few other carriages heading in the opposite direction, carrying what appeared to be furniture and luggage. You wondered if those were the same people planning to leave the city for a place they deemed safer out there, all because they no longer trusted the guild and Alyssa's protection. There were still many shops and stalls in business, houses with residents dwelling about, but everything felt just that bit quieter, just enough to be noticeable. It did not take long before you exited the city, and onto the farmlands on the outer edges of Crystal Coast. Oop! The carriage jostled lightly as the ha as the hover pads briefly faltered without its crystal stabilizers before falling back on its crystal reserves. 
Although the road was just as bumpy as it was last time, the trip somehow felt a lot more somber as everyone kept quiet. Perhaps it was because, unlike the first trip, the banter between Max and Ray that, that you'd come to expect was no longer there. This had been an hour or so into the ride. The tensity in the atmosphere made it hard to keep track of time. Maybe that was why you hadn't noticed the low humming from behind you. The comforting droning of the hum lured you in as the words, the words Max began to mutter beside you blended seamlessly into it. You couldn't help but try to match their chorus as the checkpoint slowly came into view over the hill. As you arrived at the checkpoint, the guys wasted no time dismounting the cart from the carriage, while Max guided the hooves toward the checkpoint stable. Ray, on the other hand, headed straight into the office to get the permit validated before you could all head further in. You carried the tune well, Cassian. Oh, you heard me? Not really heard, no. I could just fill your vibe with us. I don't see why you three insisted on singing that old marching cadence. What do you mean, Alex? You were singing along as well. What? Well, I did no such thing. It was nice. It kind of reminds me of when we used to sing in the car on our way back from conventions. The two gave you odd looks as they take in what you said. A car, you say? Is that like your phone? The Lynx looked at you somewhat starry-eyed and expectantly to get a head start on another invention. Cody, for his part, seemed wide-eyed and concerned. Conventions? You were summoned to participate in conventions? Ah, no, it wasn't. It, well, I wasn't summoned for. I went willingly. Thank you, know. Coffee time. All right, and we are back. Okay. Hmm. Coffee. 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 Oh. Shit makes the world go round. Okay. Before you can clarify what you were talking about, Ray and Max returned with your permits in hand. They each took one of the straps meant to attach to the hooves harnesses before pulling the cart along. He stepped out of its way as it jostled, jostled lightly upon crossing the threshold into the forest. Alex, however, refused to give up the chase for his curiosity and pressed you on the topic some more. And what of that car you mentioned? What sort of vehicle is it? You were unsure whether to answer the links in earnest or just make something up for the sake of it. You already, yet already you've let it slip of the various concerts I've been to during these conventions, which by then even Ray had grown curious. Ooh, now I want to hear what kind of music he used to listen to. Maybe we can hit up a band when we get back. And you said the convention was like our festival, right? You didn't elaborate on that. Guys, don't bother Cassie like that if he doesn't want to answer those questions. Max, on the other hand, scolded from the front, still focused on guiding the group with Ray. It's all right. I've actually been thinking about where I came from recently. It was only one thing you said, and they already had a lot of questions. What did you start with? Talk about the car. <laughs> you finally gave in to Alex's begging and talked more about cars, in broad terms at least. To your memory, Carl did own a car that the two of you would ride in whenever you had to go, dis go to distant places off campus. You noticed Max and Cody wincing when you described the vehicle as a self-propelled carriage without the need for hooves. I wonder why they seem so taken aback when Alex informed you of people's previous experiments on self-propelling carriages. Despite being able to sustain itself midair, the hover pads have nothing to pivot on, so whenever the carriage is propelled by the wind crystals, it would tailspin endlessly like a canoe on rapids. You then went into more general details about the lack of hover functionality in your car and the reliance on wheels as rudders. That was to say, it went over the heads of everyone else, but Alex seemed to hang off your every word, already sketching crude schematics based on your descriptions. You gave your limited overview of car, of car make and models, and while they hadn't much to say, everyone seemed to enjoy hearing about something new. Is that wind whistling? Huh, ah, weird. You walked up to Ray, reaching for your crystal phone, only to realize that it's not your regular phone anymore. Rather flustered, you tried to explain music players to them, but they, did, they, they didn't seem privy to it. Alrighty, there we go. You instinctively compared them to radio broadcasts, which the people of Arborea did have as crystal transmissions, just as they didn't have music on demand. Ray brought up his complaints about how, Chris, huh, how most crystal communication devices were always large and cumbersome to, huh, to handle and lug around during, uh, during field work. Which prompted you to mention... Okay. One second. Sorry, y'all. I'm just, uh... Looking at my phone because we got some bad weather, making sure we don't have any, you know, really, really bad weather. 
which prompted you to mention the ways you used to, ca used to carry the music with you in portable form, piquing Alex's curiosity even more. You then tried to sing a few of the songs you could remember offhand as a cappella, though you immediately quiet down as the looks on every the looks everyone gave you were rather embarrassing. Despite that, Ray and Cody applauded your attempt, both seemingly genuine seeming genuinely content with your performance, and continued asking about the lyrics while bringing up songs of their own. Convention. Out of curiosity, you asked everyone on the definition of a convention, which turned out to be a formal business gathering akin to congressional meetings. He then explained in brief terms that conventions in your world were more like festivals celebrating what people want. Quite intentionally, you skirted around the fact that you only ever attended furry conventions, instead of elaborating the range of themes the themes these festivals could be about. Cody showed great interest. The bear was rather curious about about uh, whether there was one such convention for chefs. And while a fun concept to toy with, you admitted that you've never heard of a convention hosted for chefs only, but it was entirely in the realm of possibility. The others then chimed in with ideas for conventions of their own. Ray suggested a meet-and-greet get-together that was pretty much speed-dating in a nutshell. Alex's ideal convention was similar to those science invention expos, while Max's fascination over competitive sports sounded more or, more or less like the Olympics. He had many a thing to comment on regarding their ideas, but you decided to keep it to yourself, lest you had to go into any more details that you already had to divulge. Thankfully, the guys quickly took over the conversation, bantering and joking about each other's ideas as you moved along. Mark Carl. Looking back, you began recounting the topics you brought up. The car, the conventions, the type of music you'd listen to. It all started from your time in college with Carl. You joked that Carl would have loved to go on this adventure with everyone else. A rather wistful thought, seeing as how he'd fallen long out of the communication months prior. Though even he would have gotten quite a kick out of seeing actual furries in action. You made sure not to blurt out that last, that last thought out loud, though, needless to say. All of a sudden, you heard the cart stop as Max approached you, flustered. You thought yourself having done something wrong before he rested a hand on your shoulder. With a heavy sigh, he reassured you that once the king had been dealt with, he'd vow to find a way for you to reunite with Carl, or at the very least meet with him, if at all possible. You could only thank him, not really knowing where he got that idea from, or what to say in return. You fell silent afterwards as you all resumed your hike through the woods. You decided to not elaborate any further which the others promptly left, left you be as soon as they got the hint. Everyone had a nice time chatting throughout the trek. Oh, we're here! You slowed down as the crew arrived upon the clearing of the base of the, of the Akai. <clears> hmm, <throat> pretty. It still looked about the same as when you last visited. The crystals hadn't lost their luster and the tree itself seemed unharmed. Huh, everything looks unchanged. We don't know that for sure yet. Alright, let's go over our task again, shall we? What is everyone doing? Let me have a look around the immediate perimeter. Make sure nothing's lurking out there, out there for us again. I need to set up the HTN around the tree's base. The sooner they're in place, the quicker we can get our results. I'll clear us. I'll clear out a section for the tents and start the fire pit. Good. All that leaves is getting the rest of our equipment out of the cart. Cassie, you're with me. Help me unload the rest of Alex's equipment. Right. You quickly climb into the cart, passing off the first equipment you can get a hold of to Max. After going through the heavier items, things really sped up as you both got into the groove of passing from cart onto the ground. Eventually, the links went by, thanking you both as he calibrated the equipment on the spot before bringing the items he urgently needed over to the Akai's base. Alright, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze-tier patrons. Thank y'all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver-tier patron, Cade Silvermoon. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold-tier patron, Omar. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier anyway. If y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to our not safe for work content as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye